If you're thinking about buying a dry washer to find gold, then this video's for you. Now we tried to get out in the field to do some dry washing this week, but we've got nothing but snow and rain. So it's gonna be a little hard until that soil dries out for us to dry wash anything. So in the meantime, I'd figure we'd cover the unit that I really like a lot and had a lot of luck with. And of course, I'll show you videos of us using it too, so you can see exactly how it works and exactly how small of gold it picks up and why. This is the Keen 140S. Fantastic machine and it's Keen's latest dry washer. Now I've used a lot of dry washers in the past, but I have to say for me, this one picks up the smallest gold possible. And there's a reason for that too, and I'm gonna explain that here in a minute. Now I don't have the hopper out here because the hopper on most dry wash is the same. It's just a classifier that sits at an angle and it basically allows the material to flow through at a specific size. Now the first thing you'll see different on this particular unit is it's got all these little pins sitting up here on top. The job of these pins is when the material first comes out of the hopper, it slams down onto here and it'll break up any of that moist material, clods, clumps, and it also, it'll help evenly distribute the material out across so when it hits the the riffles it's flowing out evenly now the second thing i really like about it is it's got two types of mesh on the back and you can see that it's got this plastic grid and there's a reason for that so you've got this particular material here and then you've got a finer material on the other side now the reason why you have a plastic grid on the back because what sits underneath it is this polyester pad and as air flows through this pad it generates a static electricity charge fine gold is attracted to static electricity and that's one of the main reasons why i really like this box all right see this hopper box everything about it's different you got this polycarbonate plastic board on the back see that and you see how you got these machine squares here see that well the reason behind that is because they want to create dead air zones behind these riffles see that if you put the light through there you'll see that it blocks the air and in the old days if you remember we had to put tape back here that would stop the airflow and it would create a dead air zone behind these riffles so the fine gold wouldn't get blown out well keen knew this and so they machined this special piece of board and the reason why it's polycarbonate is because you've got another piece of polyester material in here this creates static electricity when the air blows through it see that and when it creates static electricity it transfers it to this polycarbonate board which holds the static electricity and then what that does is if you know anything about gold gold is basically affected by static electricity the fine gold will actually stick to it i know a lot of people are going to argue with me but it's true and it, what it does is it creates that really powerful almost 0.7 milliamp static charge and it gets held in this polycarbonate board right here so it helps to hold the gold in this this new type of matting see these little tiny pins back here yeah see all that well keen engineering realized in the old days that the material would drop down and beat on the top of your box and put holes in your matting. So they put this bar, this block here to help diffuse all the material. And then these little pins here, what they do is they disperse the material so it comes across here evenly. And it goes into the top of your riffle tray a lot more evenly. So it doesn't beat up the riffle tray and it flows across it more evenly. And then you got these bump stops back here. See them on the side of the box? Well, I got one on each side. It holds this lower tray box in place. They put a big bigger fan in there with a bigger counterweight, increase the vibration, and then put these bump stops here. The vibration is transferred from the box to the hopper. So the box is vibrating and so is the hopper like this. You spend less time pushing that material down inside the hopper to get through that flow gate and then of course across the riffles. And on the back of the box, you're gonna find this slide gate right here. Acts like a tuning valve for the air that's coming in the box. Push up on this gate, this acts like a throttle valve. I can increase or decrease the amount of pressure inside of the box. And by doing so, I can reroute air out here, which increases the spin or vibration on that fan. And that way the counterweights, which are attached to the fan, slow down. And that way you don't have such a hard vibration. Because when you're dry washing, it all comes down to the soil conditions. Now, as far as blowers are concerned, you got two choices to go with. You got the four stroke and you got the two stroke. Makita makes a good four stroke and Echo makes a good two stroke. I've used both of these. They both have their pros and cons. Now for me, I personally like running the Echo two stroke over the Makita four stroke. <laughs> And the reason why is I can get more CFM out of this guy than I can this guy. Now, yeah, granted it's a lot louder, but the whole idea of a blower is what? To get as much CFM out of that thing as possible. Now, some people are gonna like the Makita because it's a lot quieter being a four stroke. And you don't have to mix your fuels like you do on the Echo. Now, on a side note, when you go to pick up your blower for your dry washer, make sure that it has the ability to lock onto a five gallon bucket. 
See these screw tops? There's one there and there's one there. And the reason why that's important is because you want to put that on a five gallon bucket because not only will this thing blow air out, it'll suck air in. So the bucket that it's attached to becomes a backpack. And you're going to need that backpack when you're done dry washing, clean off the bedrock that you just shoveled off of. Another reason I like that 140S is because it's small enough to backpack in. You get anything larger and it's too heavy and too bulky to get into the harder to reach places. And then you're going to need a crew to get it in and get it out. And that's not much fun when you're climbing up and down hills to get to a remote location. Now another nice thing about dry washers that people don't think about is they're perfect sampling machines, okay? They're not just production machines. And what I mean by that is you can go into an area that you're not sure about and you can run several buckets through there, pull a sample and figure out if that area is worth actually running the full day. And since the machine is light enough, you can carry it into remote areas, sample areas that you had your eye on, and that way you'll know whether or not it's worth coming back and running full production on. Now another little trick that we like to use our dry washer for is sampling hard rock mines. And I know you're thinking, how do you sample a hard rock mine with a dry washer? What you're going to do is you're going to run some of the waste rock piles through your dry washer. You're going to be very specific and strategic about where you get your samples from, and then you're going to keep note of what you're finding. That's why I like using a dry washer to get a more accurate reading of what's in the mine dumps. And I have found some surprising amounts of gold left behind by the old timers. And while we're on the subject of sampling, there's a really quick and easy way to find gold in water if you're not good at reading the land, but it does require the use of a metal detector. Now what we found in the past is that certain metal detectors will pick up on black sand really well. And what we'll do is we'll use our metal detector to find large deposits of black sand that are just underneath the flow sand. Okay, so what we're doing is I'm going through and I'm checking for deposits of magnetite, which is black sand. And wherever I get a high concentration reading using my VLF machine, I stick a little red flag in there and then later we'll go back and dry wash it because chances are if there's a lot of black sand there there's gold there so here we go our little orange flags right here all the way up and down the wash uh, so we're gonna start shoveling material in here and we'll get a clean up every I don't know half hour 45 minutes so that the riffles don't load up and hopefully we got ourselves some gold so here we go The reason why that's important is just like in a gold pan, if there's any fine flood gold, it's gonna be where? Right underneath that layer of black sand. So we'll use the construction flags to mark it all out. Then we'll go back and we'll simply just go through and dry wash the first six inches, nothing else. And one detector that's really good with that is the white. It has a feature on it called follow the black sands and it'll actually show you by percent where the high quantities of black sand are. So it's so easy for you to go through and map it out. Now, if I miss something, you go ahead and let me know by leaving me a comment down below. And while you're at it, why don't you let me know what kind of machine you like to use? Pros and the cons of it. Because to me, I've tried a lot of them and the 140S is right up there at the top. So anyway, I'm gonna get on out of here because I got breakfast to make. Now, if you like today's video, you better smash that like button, son. Smash it hard or it's cowboy style eggs and beans for you every day.